Morning everyone. Um, I'm just sitting here having my morning coffee and watching YouTube videos and uh, <laughs> my alerts are going off. Um, and uh, I like to watch uh, reviews and, and stuff like that, just catch up on my day and um, got a pretty busy day ahead of me here. But uh, I was watching Joshua Valor's review on the Cost Porter Pro X and this is just a video response to that. Um, I don't have any major qualms or disagreements with him on the Porter Pro X, and I highly recommend checking out his channel if you uh, if you like audio reviews and stuff. He has a great channel. Um, he's good friends with Z Reviews and DMS too, and I would recommend checking all three of them out. They all make really good videos, and they're all different styles too, which is which is pretty cool. Um, but in his video with the Porter Pro X, he mentioned a couple things um, that I wanted to address. Uh, he mentioned the physical fitment and wearing them and, and adjusting them. He also mentioned the microphone, and he also mentioned the soundstage. And I'm going to kind of do them in reverse order. Um, as far as soundstage goes, I don't, I, I disagree that they're like the best headphones for under a hundred dollars. As far as soundstage, uh, you know, like having really good soundstage, um, they. Uh, they're good, but they're not the best. And <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, I, I think I think it's hard to have good soundstage when they're the drivers are this close to your ears, and there's really only so much that can go on there. But what I think that I'm not accusing him of of confusing these two, um, but I think that the imaging is much better than the soundstage is. Uh, you can have very wide soundstage, or you can have very clear imaging, which is the separation or the distinction between left and right. Um, and they're totally independent of each other. I have some headphones that have a very narrow soundstage, but within that, you can still hear left and right in between that, and you can have very defined imaging. Um, I think these have a moderate soundstage. They don't sound uh, too wide or open and airy, although they are open back, but the imaging is fantastic. So um, it's it's a lot of a lot of times it's hard to discern the difference between the two. And there is a point where you're like, okay, well, is this sound stage or is this imaging? And uh, sometimes it can be a little bit of both. And I think it is with the Porter Pro X. But where I really noticed it was putting these on an amp. And uh, that was one of the other things I wanted to address. And he, he talked about the the four pole adapter or not adapter the four pole plug and um, you know he doesn't know of any amps that support a four, a four pole and really you just need one of these a uh, a four pole breakout to microphone and um you know heads headphone um this one i got with the vmoto boom pro works great you can pick them up for like two or three dollars on amazon um so you just plug that into this guy and then plug it into your amp and you won't, it won't sound funky or it'll, it'll work properly. Um, but again, with, with an amp, especially with like the, uh, the Lox GP20 or even the Origin G2, um, you really start to open things up with these. Uh, otherwise you're just plugging them into your onboard audio or your, uh, your phone or something like that. And it, it drives them fine. But, uh, even, even these $37 headphones, they really benefit from an amp. Um, and uh, as far as fitment goes, he mentioned, you know, adjusting these sliders and then you you adjust them a little bit and then you pull them apart and then they don't really stay and then they can only fit on like a baby's head, which is true. I mean, went all the way out, like, look how tiny this is. I can put it on my face like this. Um, the proper way to put these on, and I try to tell everyone this, you take these, the sliders, and you slide them all the way up to the top until they're touching. And then put them on your ears. And notice how the headband isn't coming down. And you take the two sliders and you pull them down like that. And that is the best way to put the Porter Pros on. 
Uh, and then it also just sits nicely and super comfortable. You don't have to fiddle with it. But if you push these sliders all the way to the top, I mean, you could do this all day and they're not coming off. Um, the other thing I, I mentioned, or I noticed, and I wanted to mention, um, he just kind of folded them up and, you know, showed him putting it in the bag and, and whatnot. Uh, you can do that. Um, but if you get the sliders to about here, maybe a little bit farther, you can take the, there's like a little clip and, and hook and just hook them together. And then you can wrap the wire around it and it makes it a little bit more compact and uh, they won't spring open and stuff like that. So anyway, that's my thoughts on the Cost Porter Pro X. You've heard me talk about these before. You've heard me talk about Cost headphones before. Uh, it's not just me that really adores and loves these headphones. Other people like Joshua Ballard, uh, DMS, uh, Z Reviews, way bigger audio channels than mine. They all love them. They're really great. And uh, I don't think he has a video on the KPH30i, which are these. Uh, these are the white and blue edition. They do come in gray and black, and they also come in the vintage tan with red and blue. Um, these are really special headphones, and that's because they are lighter than the Porter Pro. They are more comfortable, in my opinion, because of the way they sit. They actually have a real headband, even though it is just a piece of rubber. Um, and, man, they just... They feel so much better. And I cannot tell, and there's no audible difference between these and the Porta Pro. And the best thing is that these are $19.99 a mass drop. The Porta Pro X is $37.99. So for almost half the price, um, you can pick up two of these. They still have the inline mic. You can still do the same sort of adapter thing if you want to use them as like a gaming headset. Um, but I think these just. They look a little bit more natural too. Um, but I run these on a tube amp and they sound fantastic. I love them. These are my go-to costs. Porta Pro X, um, I like, you know, they're all black and everything like that, but they're not worth double the cost of the KPH30i. The KPH30i are, are the bee's knees. And just for reference, I do have the KSC75X as well. Um, these are interesting if you like the clip-on sort of fit, uh, but they definitely don't have the same sound signature as the KPH30i or the Cost Porter Pro X. Again, a little bit less bass. Um, I think actually better sound stage and better imaging, uh, but I, I don't know. I have a big head already and these kind of pull my ears apart and sit a little bit larger on my head. So these aren't really for me and, and they're not my choice and I prefer the sound signature over the other two. But these are the cheapest in the cost lineup. These are about, I don't know, 16 or $17, something like that. And if you get the silver ones, which are ugly as hell, by the way, the silver ones on Amazon, oh, they're awful. <laughs> they look awful. Uh, but but the all black ones from Mass Drop Road, they're pretty nice. So. Um, anyway, that's just my my short thoughts on the uh, on the cost lineup and just a quick response to, to Joshua's channel or his video on his channel that he uploaded today. And um, yeah, so uh, awesome channel, Josh. If you see this, uh, really like the work you're doing. You have great uh, cinematography and editing when I have essentially none. So uh, really appreciate the work you put into that, and I really enjoy watching your reviews. So. Um, yeah, if you do see this video, just let me know what you think, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.